Hello everyone. Looks like I am now live on Instagram. I'm just going to pen the event. It's AMA for May 2023. All right. Hello, Iggy Dave. Pata Ramok Priya. Hello, how are you? Hi Priya. Hi Manan, Avni. Hi Q. Hi Anuj. Hey Nazish, Ayush. Manan Bajaj. All right, we got a question here. All right, guys, let me introduce myself. I'm Vipha Kalsi, the founder and chief education officer, or as someone very politely said, you're not the chief education officer, you're the chief everything officer, which basically means you need to take care of everything. I'm sure all you founders out there can relate to what I'm saying. Um, but I'm here to do our monthly Ask Me Anything, which basically gives you uh, a chance to talk to me about anything. When I say anything, I mean careers and higher education related. So please ask away. I'm here for you. Uh, I see a question from Manan. I'll get come to your question in a second, Amar. I hope everyone's doing fine. I hope people have some fun plans for the summer. Uh, hi, Varsha. Hi, Samar. P. Mary127. Hello, Power. Hello. AK Dave. Hi, hi, hi. Varsha, Mohan. Hello, Mihir. Hi, Ruchi. Hello. All right, all right, let's, I'm going to take Manan's question first and then I'll come back to our sheet. As you know, we pre-field these questions and then pick anywhere from seven to ten questions every week. So since Manan has asked this question, Manan Bajaj, should I apply to Imperial at this point of time for the MSc in finance? Manan, I'm not sure what you mean by at this point of time. Um, I'm not sure if you mean from a profile readiness standpoint or literally from a calendar considering it's the 9th of May standpoint. I'm going to take the question assuming it's already May, like should I still apply? Um, honestly, a bit tricky considering the deadlines are still around, but once you get in, you're going to need to apply for a student visa and the chances of them processing it for a fall 23 intake are a little bit tight. Um, but Maybe, you know, if you're really keen and you don't want to spend the rest of the year doing whatever it is that you're doing, maybe reach out to them and see if you can still apply and get in because uh, people do get in, you know, so as long as your visa situation is sorted, you should be fine. Hello, Shraddha. Hello, Manya. A drink here. Hello. How are you? Okay, I see a question from Ayush08064. How much do I need to score my board exams to be considered for Oxford Cambridge? Very good question. What else do Oxbridge look for in applications? Can you share some examples? This is a fabulous question. Uh, thanks Ayush for asking. Ayush, honestly, if you're also applying either this year or in a couple of years, we do have our scholarship uh, open right now. Some of you know our scholarship we give out free application advice to 10 students every year. So Ayush, I encourage you to apply if you have a strong profile and you put in a good essay and the interviewer who interviews you is happy with how you take the answers, we'd be happy to give you free help. Um, there's a lot of people who've been getting free help from us over the years and successfully gone to top tier schools. Uh, so please feel free to do that. Coming to your question. Uh, Oxford and Cambridge and generally colleges in the UK, top tier colleges are very, very predominantly grade conscious. So they are going to look for really strong grades all throughout your high school years, especially in the subjects that you showcase that you want to study. So for example, when you're saying, what should I showcase? Um, people who want to study physics, for example, would probably need to show really strong grades in math and physics, I, I, some sort of chemistry. 
so showing strong performance in related subjects is very important in fact on their website they even list very clearly for india for this specific board what grades they actually want you to get and those cut offs change every year um and as as you probably know when you apply to colleges in the us and canada you get in on the basis of your performance from the 9th 10th 11th half of the 12th sat act scores etc but with oxbridge they look for uh, your final board exam scores to be done so you the pressure is on till you finish the board exams in uh, april or may and basis your scores then they'll see what your predicted was they'll see what your actual score is and they give you what they call uh, an, an admission which will basically be dependent on what your final scores are so it's a final performance based admit and let's say you don't meet the qualifying score then they will take away your seat at these colleges so they really are very very academic in their orientation and they also have their own internal assessment where they require you to take an oxbridge internal assessment exam um but obviously all the subjects etc are very pertinent to the area or field of study that you have chosen so just make sure that you keep your scores high in those areas do the oxbridge entrance test and really show to them that look i'm really i am interested in economics or physics or whatever it is that you choose to study they are really looking for people who are committed to a certain area of study as opposed to someone who's you know just exploring they like people who are very 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 determined and focused that was a long answer ayush hope that took care of your question uh hello rishabh hi kinjal harsha hello kevin c jo okay we have a question from avni avni vs hi my son is in grade 10 in delhi can you guide me as to when we should start the admissions process super question avni thank you for asking um when you apply to universities whether it's the uk us canada germany etc all of them start evaluating your profile from the 9th grade onwards they want to see what you've done in the last 3 and a half to 4 years before you apply to their colleges so since the universities are evaluating you basis your 9th grade performance we actually like starting counseling somewhere towards the end of the 7th grade not before that because we feel that the students are not yet ready for some sort of formal counseling uh not too late because if you start too late then you know you've uh, sort of missed the boat in terms of thinking about you know going through the whole process systematically thinking about your careers exploring um just this evening i had a session with somebody who said the all of the 7th and 8th she thought she wanted to study economics but now she as she's entering the 10th grade she thinks she wants to be an engineer which is totally fine right like it's it, i i honestly i like confusion i like conflict i like mayhem but earlier earlier you sort of confront your conflict and the earlier you start working on it the better it is so in fact the uh, avni when i do this session i have a knowledge session i conduct which i give 10 tips on cracking the ivy leagues and in, interestingly the number one tip i give is start early so if there's one thing you're going to take away from this session today avni is that you should start early and just connect with our team on help at reachiv.com and we'll be able to definitely share a lot more details on you know what to do and the summer is coming up it would make a lot of sense for you to plan uh, your son's summer plans so that he can use the summer in a constructive manner to figure out whatever it is that he needs to figure out i hope that helped of me let's take a question from rishabh gupta rishabh gupta says how is the amba program uh, rishabh which school where if you can throw some more details i'd be happy to answer which one are you considering what exactly are you considering shubha jindal hello namrita valecha hi mayuro hello it's ashir hello akash hi shami bhagat how's it going ayush thank you no my my pleasure okay let's take this question from patabhi ramu my son after his ug 3.6 gpa is currently working with stanchart and also studying cfa level 1 
could I do the CFA level on two Pazabi and it's actually quite intense. After work experience also eventually aim for MBA or masters in finance. A very good question. Uh, this question comes up all the time. The difference between uh, MFIN or MIM or another master's program, data analytics versus getting the MBA. So thank you for asking this. Uh, very relevant to a lot of people here. Look, the fundamental difference is that the MBA is a general degree, right? It's a general management degree, which prepares you as an expert to do finance and operations and strategy and marketing and investments and a little bit of data analytics and nowadays a lot of a little bit of AI and computer science, etc. The curriculum is more holistic. It's an all rounded program designed for people who potentially want to be founders or entrepreneurs or managers, right? So let's say you want to work in finance in an investment bank, but you see yourself eventually either managing the entire investment bank as the CEO, or you see yourself uh, starting a chain of investment banks or, you know, where you see yourself in a position of overall leadership and overall management, okay? The MFIN, on the other hand, is designed for people who are very focused on becoming experts in finance, which means that they eventually want to either become uh, portfolio managers at uh, hedge funds or uh, run their own hedge fund, but they want to focus on the investment side and not really the managerial side, or they want to become CFOs in organizations. So people who have a pretty focused track on one domain, that's who the master's programs are designed for. Third thing I just want to put up with Abhi is that in case your son wants to first become an expert in one domain, whether it's finance or analytics or whatever, work for three, four, five years and then top it up with an MBA afterwards. That's also a really strong combination because then he has the financial expertise for one domain and then he becomes an overall sort of general manager, senior manager. And then over the years, he has equipped with, he's equipped himself with both skills. I hope that makes sense. Thank you for your question. I'm going to move on. Ayush is asking, has, have UK colleges historically preferred IB students from India over CBSE IC students? If yes, so what? Uh, good question, Ayush. And thanks again for asking this because this dispels a lot of myths people have. But no, I have not seen any such uh, historic preference. In fact, India has historically been uh, largely, you know, Indian boards and then the Cambridge board came around with the A-levels, etc. Of course, they like people with the A-levels because they understand it really well. But that being said, they are, the colleges, especially the older ones that are more entrenched and established, have a very, very good understanding of the landscape in India. What they do really like and what most universities like, not just UK colleges, is the credibility, the credibility longevity and culture of the institution that you're coming from. So if you take a really well established school and let's say the school still not offering, as you know, like a lot of the schools in Delhi are still not offering IB. They remain CBSC board schools. Um, do the kids from there get into Oxbridge, Imperial, LSE, etc.? Of course they do because these are institutions built over decades and decades of performance and refinement. So it's not so degree dependent as it is institution and reputation dependent. Yeah, all right, I hope that helps Ayush. Hello, Abu. Hey, Abhi, thanks, thanks for connecting, cheers. I am Saxena, hello, Rohan Merch, hi. Uh, Rishabh Gupta, Amba from George Washington. Yeah, um, Rishabh, it's a good program. Honestly, I don't know enough about you and your profile, your eligibility, uh, the strength of your profile, you know, are you eligible to go to a better school? Then I would obviously push you towards going to a better school. Uh, I don't know your grades, I don't know your work experience. So difficult for me to answer without knowing your overall profile, you know. That's why in our sessions we spend about, I need an hour to talk to you and understand really and go into depth and then be able to give you a answer to such a specific question, huh? Sorry, I'm not trying to evade your question, I'm just trying to be really transparent and tell you that. I need a little bit more data, huh? Sorry about that. Okay, hi Pradeepa. Gitali Vadwa, hi. Kemansi, hello. Okay, uh, I'll keep my eyes on the question set here. <laughs> Thank you, Raji. And I will continue taking the questions I have pre-fielded. 
have a question from uh, Tushar Chopra from Bombay. Tushar says, I recently discovered your website while conducting an online search and I am exclusively interested in applying to top schools in America and Canada. Do they require 16 years of education and how can I bridge the one year gap? And interestingly, Prashant Shah from Baroda has a very similar question where he asks, where can I apply for an MBA with 15 years of education? Okay, thank you guys for asking this question. And for anyone who has not read my book, which is called Break the MBA Code, um, it's available on Amazon, at bookstores, etc. Uh, please pick it up. It's a very comprehensive guide on the MBA. A lot of the material is pertinent to people who want to apply for masters, undergrad, everything. And this 15 years versus 16 years comes up quite often. Uh, want to clarify that because India has traditionally been a 12 plus 3 country, many, many business schools are open to getting people in with a three year undergraduate degree. Uh, some of them are not. Some of them are open to making exceptions. So what I always recommend doing is sending an email to the admissions department, telling them you know who you are, what your background is, where your degree is from, and then asking them, like, do you think this would qualify for an equivalent of your four-year degree? And honestly, in many cases, uh, I've heard answers in the affirmative. So guys, Tushar and Prashant, don't worry about it so much. See if you can send them that email and get a positive answer. Okay, hope that helped. Hello, N. NS Rajan, hello Milan, hi Zubin, all right, um, feel free to ask away in the chat, I'm going to take a couple of more questions here, let's see, I have a question from Liana Robin from Ernakulam, who says, what is the list of things required to get into Harvard, okay, uh, what degree for the masters, okay, all right, and I have another question from Aishwarya from Calicut. Wow, lots of questions from Kerala. Aishwarya, how can I apply to Harvard? How much does it cost? What's the time for the application process? What are the scholarships? Okay, lots of questions baked into one. Aishwarya, thank you for your questions. All right, so let's take this one. So what do you need to get into Harvard, right? This is a question I had in my mind for very long, uh, for many, many years. Uh, honestly, it's not such a mystery as it seems uh, to be and of course before you get into the hallowed halls of Harvard and before you get that admit uh, there's a lot of suspense you know and intrigue about Harvard uh, and it almost feels like damn this is not gonna happen right like you're just like hey I'm never gonna get in and that's honestly exactly how I felt I was like uh, this is not gonna happen man this for a while I was like it's not gonna happen and then for a long long time I convinced myself that I was gonna make it happen so I just want to put it out there, guys, that if you're looking at applying, uh, go in with the conviction that you can, you're going to make it happen. And when I say you're going to make it happen, it means like you're going to put in all the effort it needs to get in. Um, that's if you really want to go, you know. It doesn't mean that going to Harvard is really, uh, I mean, it, it could be your dream and ambition and it's okay if it's not. Like, I, I don't see this as like one of those things that like a checkbox in your life, but for those of you who it's important for, uh, just go in with the conviction that I think I can make this happen. Yeah? Okay. So, answering that question, generally what any top school for your undergraduate would look for, uh, and for your masters, I break it down into four sections, which is exactly how we've designed our counseling form. Uh, academics, work experience, leadership, and community involvement. So these are the four different sort of segments and I would say you should look to nail these sections but look to nail them in an authentic manner, uh, never losing the essence of who you really are, who you really want to be. So don't try to create a persona for no reason um, but stay authentic to your true self, really that's the key and um, there are different ways of showcasing you know academic strength academic prowess 
for the person who's asking about masters remember that for masters programs the universities are very very focused they're not really so excited about your extracurricular profile and your community involvement and you know looking for an overall holistic person wherein for the undergraduate programs they really are focused on a holistic application so understand the program understand the degree you're applying for and then try to really showcase to the college that look i am really focused on this domain and i have really explored i've gone through enough of life i've gone through enough experiences to really ascertain for myself that this is really genuinely what i want to do um and i've also excelled in all these things along the way therefore i am a well deserving candidate more well deserving than the other 10000 files you have on your desk yeah i hope that makes sense honestly to go into more detail i'd lo- i'd love to have your profile and do a proper in depth private personal session for you but uh, i hope this answer gave you the overall sense of what they're looking for and how to really go about differentiating yourself okay cheers a question from priya bhatia any tips on the common app essay this is a good question priya uh, and honestly i read a lot of common app essays as you can imagine and funnily enough before i get into any editing strategizing brainstorming with my students i always ask them to write you know their version of the common app essay and i often times i'm quite surprised to read you know what they write um i'll see essays on how i love scuba diving and why i went scuba diving this summer or you know uh, stuff that's not really related to their degree uh stuff that's not really showcasing their strengths stuff that's not really showcasing the best of their profile so i would say honestly for me the common app essay one is the most important essay in your application more important than the essays you put into the supplemental apps simply because this is the first essay that they are going to read simply because the f- the only essay that's going to go to every single college you apply to so please take the common app essay if you want anything else seriously take the common app essay one more seriously because it forms the fulcrum of your application and also remember whatever you put in your common app essay one when you write the supplemental essays you got to make sure they align and they don't overlap right if you're going to write the same thing in the common app essay and then the same thing again in the supplemental essays then there's an overlap so be careful of avoiding the overlap be conscious that this is the only essay is going to all schools three know that regardless of what degree you're applying for sometimes people apply with different degrees to different schools common app is going to every single college and fourth remember that the common app should give them some unique perspective to want to read the supplemental essays right if the common app essay falls flat then i'm just say i don't know if i want to read the supplemental essays like it's your first filter okay uh, pick a topic that's interesting honestly the common app essay topics are great they are broad they allow you so much flexibility they even have a such uh, option of like write anything you want to right pick an essay topic that you want to basically says write whatever you want so with so much inbuilt flexibility you should be really intelligent about what you choose to write and what aspect of yourself do you want to showcase to the school yeah so uh, priya i hope these tips make some sense and uh, if i can help in any way you know i'd love to understand you know your child's background and what they've done what the achievements are what sort of storyline to pitch it's a lot of strategy it needs a lot of sitting back rehashing thinking um but you're still some time away from the common app honestly at this point with the summer i avoid think talking about applications and essays and i actually focus on the summer and summer activities so that's another tip on the common app don't worry about it right now all right thanks priya hello dhwani hi devang avnisha hi ayappa hello isha hi isha khan good to see you Rishabh, you missed my question. You missed my answer because network issues. Okay, I was trying. To, I, what I was saying is, Rishabh, I don't know enough about you, your background, and your profile to know where you stand in terms of eligibility, where you stand in terms of profile. Like, is is a GW program underselling you, overselling you? So honestly, I said I didn't want to answer this question in any more detail than this, just because I don't know enough about you. So I don't want to. 
um, give you inadequate or wrong advice. So I said it's better if you actually work with one of our experts on understanding this better. Hello, Bindia. Nice to see you here. All right, guys. I will take one last question here. Prerna Serene, hi, from New Delhi, who says, "What do they look for? What do the authorities look for before giving scholarship?" And the answer is, uh, "What do they look for?" I I had explained earlier what they look for. You know, what a top college would look for, what Harvard would look for. Essentially, when they're giving out the scholarship, they're looking for people who stand out amongst the cohort of people who apply, who stands out even more exceptionally. Remember, there's two types of scholarships. One's a need-based scholarship. One's a need-blind scholarship. A need-based scholarship is like they look at your overall profile and they say, "Oh my God, wow, this person is fab," uh, and you know he comes from a annual household income of X amount of dollars. Every college has its own metric. But basically, if you understand that affordability is an issue for you because you come from a certain income bracket where you can't afford the university, then that means it's a need-based scholarship. There are need-blind scholarships which basically say, "Look, this person is so amazing. He is so awesome. She totally deserves a spot at our school, and this is somebody we want within our school and our program." And those people get what they call a need-blind scholarship, where you basically get in because you're just so awesome. And uh, what's the trick to being so awesome? It really, honestly, loops back to a question we had at the beginning of the session, which said, "You know, my kids in the tenth grade, and when should I start?" And I said, "Start early, because the earlier you start thinking, the earlier you start investigating, the earlier you start investing uh, in your future, and the earlier you honestly it's just an exploration. The earlier you start asking questions, or start being asked questions by somebody else, saying, 'Hey, what do you think? When do you think?'" Uh, that's when the the real uh, process, at least in your head, starts. And the earlier you start focusing on these aspects of your life, the, the earlier you have some amount of clarity and some amount of direction. All right, guys, it's uh, almost 7 p.m. and I'm going to now end this month's AMA. I will be back in June. Please feel free to apply for a scholarship. As I said, the reachiv.com scholarship is live on our website. Every year, ten people will get free help from our experts. Uh, so definitely apply and uh, stay in touch on Quora, Instagram, LinkedIn. We're everywhere, and we're very happy to uh, stay connected and help in whatever way we can because that's what we're here for. All right, thank you guys. Have a great day ahead. Cheers.